안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. <laughs> That's about all I know. Well, welcome to Korea. Welcome to Seoul. Thank you. This, I'm really, really happy to be here. Uh, this is your first trip to Korea. What's your yes. impression? Um, I have always wanted to come here, and um, uh, this has been such a, a, a you know, a, a wonderful experience to meet um, the people at Sparks Lab and uh, to sort of experience this other uh, world, you know, with um, VCs and people who are in the business. Um, I find that what's so interesting is that our worlds are not very different. You know, the, the VCs that I have met, these venture capitalists, they are dreamers, sort of like actors and people in the entertainment business. And they are um, innovators and, and they love to create. And uh, I, now I have a very different idea about what uh, VCs are. You know, they're, they're, there's a, also a sense of altruism with uh, the, their ventures and their mission. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been very enlightening. That's great. Um, Korea's place on the world stage has been dramatic in the past 10 years and uh, even more so in the last couple of years with the pandemic, with Korean content, with uh, K-dramas, with K-pop exploding. Uh, it almost feels like it happened overnight, but there was a time when you and I started in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where Long we ago. looked completely different than everybody else. When we walked into a room, yes. we were considered foreigners. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what your journey was like breaking into Hollywood as uh, Asian American? I think that's the big difference between um, an Asian American actor versus um, performers and actors and musicians in Korea, let's say. Uh, we have immense challenges of overcoming not just stereotype and racism, but very, very limited roles. And uh, I know when I first started, um, the good thing was I was, a, I was naive and uh, uh, probably, uh, you know, not too smart up here. <laughs> because I just felt like, well, this is my dream and I'm going to go after it and I'm going to just work really hard and, and things will happen. Um, so I think having sort of those blinders on really helped to make me feel like I could do it. And uh, because if I gave it a second thought, and saw the obstacles, and you know, I, I don't know if I would have um, wanted to venture into uh, being an actress. Well, I, I often say that Hollywood is an equal opportunity discriminator. <laughs> that Hollywood is hard for anybody and everybody, so if you're an Asian American in the 80s or 90s, it's even harder. So were there struggles? Were there unusual challenges that you thought might have been based upon your ethnicity or your race yeah, or your one, gender? Well, exactly. One is um, not having a lot of roles available. So there was a thing called non-traditional casting um, where sometimes they wanted to see all ethnicity for one part, just, just in case. So you go into a room with the challenge of having to convince them that they shouldn't cast a Caucasian actress, they should cast you and give it a, give it a try. That's what happened with me on ER. That's what happened with me on uh, what you saw. Uh, that's my character there, Agent May. She was not Agent May when we started. Um, actually, her name was Agent Rice. <laughs> Ironically. And um, so once they cast me, one of the producers who's um, also, uh, she, she's uh, Thai, she says, I don't think we can call her Agent Rice anymore. So uh, they changed it. But you know, a lot of times that's what happens. You have to go in there and just convince yourself and believe that you 
you're the one that's right for this part and they should cast you. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Well, we, um, I know they played a video of you, but you know, ER had George Clooney, yeah. one of the most successful shows on television for many years. Then there was Joy Luck Club, which was the, really the first mainstream breakout film that featured uh, all Asian cast. And then Mulan, which is a Disney-like super hit. Mandalorian, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We often kid around that you are the good luck charm in Hollywood, that whatever project you're associated with um, ends up being a hit. Can you just talk about how your association happens with all these major hits? And Disney and Marvel. Well, I Marvel. definitely don't uh, credit myself for it. You know, I mean, uh, with any project, it's uh, it's teamwork, it's great writing, you know, great directing and producers. Uh, it, it's such a massive family that goes into creating a show. I just happen to be um, lucky enough to have been given the opportunity um, to work within these amazing groups of people um, to, you know, bring, bring a show and a character to life. But thank you, Teddy, for giving me such credit. Um, but uh, I, I think what, what's most important is that teamwork in any, in any field, right? Whether it's in show business, or we, we have to remember that without the help of everyone in, in having a vision, it doesn't happen. And I, I think what's really great, like with someone like you too, is we're always trying to support each other, right? We're always trying to lift each other up and, and, and give each other um, a pat on the back when it happens. It's, it's those little encouragements in a very small community of Asian American talents in Hollywood that really helps uh, us to continue and, and keep fighting. Well, we, we, I kid around about you being the good luck charm, but actually in Hollywood. Oh, maybe I am the good luck <laughs> charm. Let's, let's, that, let's think of that. <laughs> How is casting done? Um, in the old days, you were an actor, an actress, and that was the important thing. Now you have to be an actress and an influencer an actress, an influencer, and an entrepreneur. How many followers you have on Instagram and Twitter really means something. So at the end of the day, I think people cast you because of course you have talent, but everybody wants to associate with a winner. People hire you if you went to Seoul University or uh, you know the top schools, the Sky Castles, uh, you know, you're associated with winners, so it's... Well, I did go to a good university for drama, which my mom, to this day, is still very surprised that in America, they give, um, you know, they give uh, a diploma for drama. She's like, oh, American school is so easy. So <laughs> she just couldn't believe that I could actually get a diploma for it. But um, Carnegie Mellon was uh, my uh, foundation in uh, helping me to learn the skills, you know. And, uh, and once again, I, I think in Hollywood, it's a very small community. Um, and especially for Asian Americans, it's an even smaller community. And your reputation is also something that is very important. And I think um, if, uh, you know, you're, you show up on time, you don't throw temper tantrums. You, uh, you know, you're good to work with, and uh, you hit your marks and know your lines, and sprinkle it with some talent. Um, it, maybe that's my good luck, right there. <laughs> uh, Joy Luck Club was how many years ago? In uh, 25, I believe. 1995. Yeah, about that. 26 now, maybe. Yeah. So uh, recently they announced a sequel. What do you think about the timing? Um, I think after the success of Crazy Rich Asians and um, Sh uh, Shang-Chi uh, and uh, um, a few other things, um, hopefully, yeah, 
they've been talking about it for a few years, and I'm waiting to see the script. I really hope that we have a good script to make the sequel make sense, you know? But I'm very excited. I, I, I still keep in touch with all my, my, uh, my sisters, my Joy Luck Club sisters, as well as all the moms. Uh, we're a very close family. So uh, we, we've talked about K-pop, we've talked about K-dramas. Uh, you're here for a reason. We, we also should cover K-beauty. Can you talk a little bit about that and your interest in K-beauty? Um, I love K-beauty. I think not only do they uh, back it up with science and, you know, pure ingredients and and just, there's so much passion that goes behind the research for K-beauty. And, uh, and I think it's extremely complimentary for Asian skin. Um, and uh, the one thing that I do love is when Asians say I look young, then I'm like, yes, <laughs> I, I'm doing something right. So I'm very excited about um, going into um, a, a, a venture with, with a, a K-beauty um, uh, developer in trying to come up with my own line of uh, beauty creams. Great, great. So yeah. one of the funny things is that uh, we, we know that you've been in the business. We can consider you a veteran. You're a, of that certain age. But your fan base is wide-ranging, male, female, young, old. What, wh why is that? Well, because I'm fortunate enough to, um, well, maybe because I look young, Teddy. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I think it's because um, the projects that I've been able to do, I mean, I am a, such a nerd at heart. I love everything to do with science fiction and Star Wars and Marvel. So all these projects that have come my way, I feel like the synergy you know, it, it was just meant to be. And um, I mean, as a kid, I, I dreamed about being on Tatooine and, you know, I wanted to be a Jedi, but so I got cast as a, an assassin. Still, still a great, great gig. And I, I think um, it's, it's those shows that bring me all the new young fans. And I, I have to say Mulan. Mulan is everlasting. Mulan is so powerful in her story that this movie, even though it's over 20 some years old, I think it came out in 1998, um, it still has such a, a positive impact. Um, I have moms that come up to me with their children and they were fans of Mulan and now their you know, daughters or sons are fans of Mulan. So it's everlasting. I mean, that's the most amazing thing about Disney. Well, we, we talked about this spanning generations, and now you're an actress, a businesswoman, an influencer, a wife, and a mom. Yeah. So tell most us how, important. You, how, can you, how can you balance all of that? I have a really good husband. <laughs> that's my key to uh, success, I think. Um, and I, I really believe uh, uh, the support I get and the love um, when I come home every day helps me to keep the balance and uh, make the right decisions. Um, I love my job, and now that our kids are older, you know, hopefully I'll be able to spread my wings a little bit more and, uh, and, and travel and do more movies and things. I did mostly television so I could stay home more and be in L.A. and uh, be able to come home every night, you know, to my kids and to my husband. So, but uh, I'm looking forward to the new challenges. Today, we have a number of companies that are pitching here, presenting here, it is a startup environment. They yeah. are all pursuing their big dreams. And in a weird way, the world of technology and startups is very similar to Hollywood where everybody has a dream. Everybody faces struggles. So what I'd like for you to do is to share advice to people who are starting out 
who are facing enormous challenges where a lot of people say no and want to discourage you. The odds are against you, whether you're an actress or a director or um, entrepreneur. What would you tell them? Well, um, this is my little secret to success. It's if you're passionate about it, this is what I tell my kids. If you're passionate about something, you just got to go head on into it and not make excuses. You know, it, you see the hurdles, you jump over the hurdles, you, you walk around it, you knock it down. You just don't make excuses. I mean, I could have made excuses my entire life. I'm Asian, I'm a woman, now I'm a, a woman of a certain age. But those, you're saying no to yourself. So I think when you have that passion, you just latch onto it, believe in yourself, and don't take no for an answer, you know? Just keep going and keep doing it and look for that finish line. And when you get there, make a new finish line for yourself. Well, we're, we're coming up at the very end. I wanted to thank you for coming out and sharing your perspective. Any last words before we say goodbye to everybody? Um, I just thank you to Sparks Lab for um, inviting me here. You know, I, when, um, and Teddy, you know, when he, he brought it up, I, I was like, well, what do I have to offer to all the, you know, entrepreneurs? Uh, we don't have anything in common. But um, I wanted to come to Korea, uh, and now I'm so happy because your minds, the way it works, it's so fascinating to me because it's not the way my mind works at all. You know, I, I think about things in, in a sort of like all over the place way and an artistic way of, and you guys have that plus the ability to organize it in a way and focus it in a way that I, I love. I, I, I'm so inspired um, having met some of the uh, VCs here tonight. And, and I always say that to you, right, Teddy? I'm like, I don't know how your mind works, but it's, it's so exciting. And, uh, and it's just another incredible creative process. So I applaud all of you for, for um, just you know doing what you do because you guys also really contribute so much to humanity and to society. So that's been my new enlightenment. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you, everybody. Um, 감사합니다. 감사합니다.